But we begin tonight with news that gets sort of a tongue-in-cheek red siren. Um, it is news that is big enough to at least bump health reform off the top of our newscast, which is something that I would not have predicted before I saw this news today. The Republican Party itself tonight finding itself implicated in something that started as a run-of-the-mill sex scandal, but that has grown now into a legal crisis complete with a federal grand jury subpoena for the Senate campaign arm of the Republican Party. Nine months ago, it looked like a simple case of political and sexual hypocrisy on the part of Republican Senator John Ensign of Nevada. Senator Ensign had run for office as a family values conservative. He had called for Bill Clinton to resign because of the affair President Clinton had while in office. When his Senate colleague, Larry Craig, was caught in an embarrassing airport bathroom sex sting, John Ensign called for Senator, excuse me, John Ensign called Senator Craig a disgrace and told the Associated Press that if he, John Ensign, were ever in that sort of position, he would resign from office. But then John Ensign was forced to admit publicly his own sexual indiscretions. Last year, I had an affair. I violated the vows of my marriage. It's absolutely the worst thing that I've ever done in my life. That was June of last year, Mr. Ensign apologizing to his family, his friends, and his staff. But despite what he preached for Larry Craig and Bill Clinton, Senator Ensign did not himself resign. And if the story had ended there, Senator Ensign would probably still be the only one in any kind of real trouble for this right now. And that trouble, that trouble would probably just be of the, the marital sort and the political sort. But it turns out that John Ensign's public mea culpa was just the beginning of this John Ensign scandal. It soon became the John Ensign sex and lobbying scandal. And the John Ensign sex and lobbying scandal has now become the John Ensign slash Republican Party sex and lobbying and potentially bribery scandal. In the nine months since Senator Ensign admitted to having had the affair, we've learned about attempts to cover up the affair, as well as payoffs to his mistress's family. And now we know that the erstwhile sex scandal has mushroomed into a criminal investigation by the FBI. A criminal investigation by the FBI that has roped in the Republican Party itself. Here's how it happened. John Ensign's affair was with Cindy Hampton, a campaign aide of his who was married to Doug Hampton. Doug Hampton also worked for John Ensign in Ensign's Senate office. The affair reportedly began in December 2007. It lasted until August 2008. Now, during that time, John Ensign was both a U.S. senator and he was chairman of the Republican Party's Senate Campaign Committee. A few months after Senator Ensign started sleeping with his employee, Cindy Hampton, the senator put the Hamptons' teenage son on the payroll of the Republican Party's Senate Campaign Committee. In other words, money from Republican donors, money donated by people to elect more Republicans to the Senate, was used to pay the son of John Ensign's mistress. He was a teenager at the time. He was on the NRSC payroll as a policy analyst. This, of course, was during the disastrous 2008 election cycle, with John Ensign responsible for the Republican Party's fortunes in the Senate in that election. Republicans lost eight seats. Not a single seat switched hands from Democrat to Republican, and five Republican incumbents lost their seats to Democrats. John Ensign was in charge of the Republicans' effort in that election in the Senate. In retrospect, it seems possible that he was distracted. Senator Ensign's affair is thought to have ended in August 2008, as I said. That is the same time the mistress's son was taken off the payroll at the National Republican Senatorial, Senatorial Committee. Now, was there any connection between Ensign's affair and this young man being hired by the campaign organization that Ensign chaired? Was it just a coincidence that the young man was removed from the payroll around the same time John Ensign's affair with the kid's mom ended? Senator Ensign has never answered those questions, nor has the Senate campaign committee that he led at the time. The NRSC did confirm to this show back in June that the Hampton son was listed on the organization's expenditures. When we asked them about the affair and the employment of Hampton's son again in July, they told us they hadn't received any complaints from donors about how donors' money was spent on the committee in relation to the committee's chairman's extramarital affair and his generosity with the campaign's money to his mistress's family. But the questions about the affair, its cover-up and its aftermath, don't end there. 
Two of the top employees of the Republican Senate Campaign Committee were tasked by Senator Ensign with some of the cleanup after the affair. In the summer before the 08 election, John Ensign asked the political director and the finance director of the Republican Party's Senate Campaign Committee to put his former mistress's husband, Doug Hampton, on the payroll at their political consulting firm. They did so. Emails obtained last summer by the Las Vegas Sun show that those two senior NRSC officials knew about the affair and its aftermath by July of last year. And now, according to new investigative reporting from KLAS-TV in Las Vegas, not only did John Ensign direct Republican Party funds to the son of his mistress, not only did he ask two top officials at the Republican Party Senate Campaign Committee to put his mistress's husband on the payroll at their company, not only is John Ensign being investigated investigated for having arranged potentially illegal log lobbying gigs for the mistress's husband. But there are other actions taken by Senator Ensign while he was heading up the Republican Party Senate Campaign Committee that are being investigated now by the FBI. KLAS, a TV station in Senator Ensign's hometown of Las Vegas, is reporting on a slew of grand jury subpoenas that have been served in Nevada this month by federal investigators looking into the affair and other things about Senator Ensign. One of the companies that has one of the companies that has acknowledged receiving a subpoena is a company that's called Ecom Link. Now, according to KLAS's reporting, Ecom Link was one of a group of prepaid credit card companies, essentially gift card companies, approached by Senator Ensign's office to and, and, and told that in exchange for donations to the Republican Party Senate Campaign Committee, he could help get rid of pending new regulations that would be bad for that company. If a quid pro quo were offered, solicited, or actually took place, that would be the sort of thing that is commonly known as bribery. And that's where we stand. The John Ensign Republican Party sex lobbying and maybe even attempted bribery scandal. Beyond the affair, did the senator use his office and the funds or the manpower of the Republican Party itself to try to cover up the affair, to try to arrange an illegal lobbying job for his mistress's husband, or to provide any illegal quid pro quo for companies in his home state of Nevada. The question is now not only how far John Ensign himself could fall, but whether he is set to bring some of the Republican Party down with him. We'll talk with the reporter at KLAS-TV who's been investigating how deep the Ensign scandal goes next. Please stay with us. So here's the full list of what we know. Rogic and Arnott have been served by the Senate. We also know executives at card companies EcomLink, Selling Source, and PayCard USA have been served by the grand jury. Emails reveal Ensign's group pushed multiple tech companies for money. That's KLAS-TV's investigative reporter Jonathan Humbert in a package on this story naming names in the simultaneous, simultaneous Senate and Department of Justice investigations into Nevada Senator John Ensign. Mr. Humbert and his team have done some excellent investigative reporting on this story. We're happy to have Mr. Humbert join us tonight. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much uh, for being with us. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Rachel. And it certainly was a big team effort. Big thanks to everyone involved. Great. Um, help us understand the two parallel investigations that are going on here, one by the Department of Justice, the FBI, uh, and one by the Senate. Are, are both of these investigations looking uh, at the same potential crimes or potential misbehavior? Well, they're looking at the same evidence. They're trying to find the same amounts of information that have been passed through emails, conversations, meetings that had gone on, but they're, in the end, going to be doing two very different things. The Senate Ethics Committee obviously investigating just the senator, but when you get to the criminal side of things, that's when things get a little dicey. It appears that Doug Hampton may have done more, perhaps violating a federal ban on lobbying for one full year after leaving the senator's office. So that's what they're going to be looking at for him. When it comes to the Senate, they're also going to look at what may have been done and how he went about trying to get these jobs for Doug Hampton, shopping him around, so to speak. That's what they're going to try to find and see how he did it, what words were put in other people's mouths, what he said, and how that all came to pass. Because there is a, a lobbying ban for people leaving Senate offices like Doug Hampton did, potentially if, Doug, if, if John Ensign is found to have overtly facilitated, knowingly facilitated, facilitated getting Doug Hampton a job that is specifically a lobbying job, that would be a criminal problem, not just an ethics problem for the senator. Isn't that right? 
Well, and that's the great issue that needs to still be decided, is that you, you lead a horse to water, so to speak. You get him the job. You do everything you can to help your friend succeed after everything that had happened with the affair. But then the question is, how far do you go in continuing that job, getting him other jobs? Is, that, is it Hampton who goes forward and violates that ban, or is Ensign in some way legally culpable for making that happen? Is that you can give someone the opportunity to commit a crime, but it's whether they actually follow through with it it's the issue. I see. Well, one of the things that was um, so surprising this week that your investigative team helped move the story toward is this, uh, this other element of the investigation that I did not know about before, and it's about these prepaid credit card companies, like, for example, EcomLink, one of the companies that has received a subpoena, apparently. What do we know specifically about those dealers?